kind of wonders what I'm running here in the, the vintage AM room. Uh, we'll start here. This is a Barker and Williams T368. Built between the 1950s and the 1970s. This one is actually serial number uh, 242. And it is an E model. It's about uh, 400, 450 carrier. It'll go from uh, 1.5 all the way to 20 megacycles. And, um, it's a military transmitter. So that's that guy. Next we have an Imperial Electronics. R390A. That's a general coverage HF receiver. Built from 1955 to 1970. There was over um, 55,000 of them sold. So that's that guy. Next up we have a Johnson Viking 2. The uh, Johnson Viking 2. <clears throat> Transmitter will go from 160 to 10 meters with the 122 BFO. These were built from 1952 to 1957. Give you about 135 watts AM input. And uh, the old girl weighs about 70 pounds. There's the matching 122 BFO. So that's that guy. Next up here we have uh, something a little newer. This is a Hallicrafters SX110. Four band general coverage receiver. Um, it's built from the 1960s to 1963. Uh, interesting fact about this uh, particular receiver this model was used by Stig Weinerstorm to receive where he was a spy in the UK and he used to receive his orders from the Soviet Union on a, a, trans, a receiver just exactly like this next up we have the uh, S57A S57, or excuse me, S53A. S53A is a general coverage receiver. Uh, this receiver was um, made from 1951 to 1959. We call these the mantle model because they're so small. And it, uh, it does broadcast plus two shortwave bands. Next on the list, one of my favorites. Is the uh, WRL Globe Scout 40A built in 1953? It's a 40 watt AM, 50 watt CW crystal control transmitter. Has a single 6146 output, and this one is actually in, in excellent shape. And then next up, we have a Heath kit. IO30 oscilloscope. Uh, these were made like right around 1963. This one's in great shape. Works well. And next to it, we have a uh, Hammerland HQ129 X ray, and that's also a general coverage receiver. Produced from 1946 to 1953. A broadcast plus two shortwave. The price in 1946 was $200 for this receiver. Amazing. And uh, we move along here. In the light, not very good. There you go. This is a Hallicrafters S20R. Sky Champion. 
this receiver was uh, produced from 1939 to 1945, so um, you could call that almost pre-war. It's a four-band receiver, general coverage. Sold for $49.50 back in 1939. And one of the cool things about that receiver is that in the back it has a socket for an S meter. Very that's very high tech for for 1939. And uh, here's an, uh, a Multi Elmac AF67. The uh, Multi Elmacs, this is a later Multi Elmac. And I'll show you in the rest of the, the room here. I have some others, but this one's in good shape. It's about a 1960 ish uh, Transciter. That's what they call these. These were AC or DC uh, and used a lot in, in mobile applications. So here we go over to the um, National NC125. NC125 um, was produced from 1950 to 1956 as a general coverage receiver. 560 KC to 35 megacycles. It's a really nice receiver with the matching speaker. Really like the old National finish. Next up, one that everybody's seen, Johnson Viking Valiant, produced from 1956 to about 1962. Of course, three tube final, 6146s, modulated by two 6146s, goes 10 through uh, 160, to about 200 watts input AM. And that girl weighs about 73 pounds. Something a little newer, I guess. And everybody's seen these. This is a Hammerland um, HQ170. This is a real amateur radio receiver. So it receives only in, uh, in amateur radio bands. Covers 6 to 160, seven bands. Built from 1958 to 1962. Next up, we have a National NC200, Silver Anniversary Edition, built from 1940 to 1943. It's a general coverage broadcast uh, receiver, broadcast plus two shortwave bands. The price for this girl. 1940 was $147. Just imagine what that would equal out to today. Slide back here. Next up is a set of multi LMAX AF68s. The trans Transciter 9 tube transmitter built in 1960. There's the matching PMR8 receiver. And right up there on top is the M1070 AC-DC power supply. Excellent uh, little transmitter and receiver. And next on the list is the Helicrafters SX99. There's a lot of those out there. The SX99 was built from 1954 to 1959. When it first came out in 1954, it cost $200. It's a general uh, coverage receiver, broadcast plus two short wave. And just below that, which is kind of hard to see, with the trash can. Get that out of your way, maybe. SX-76, probably one of my favorites. Everybody knows why it's a favorite. Because of that monster meter on the right-hand side. 
The S76 was built from 1951 to 1955. General coverage, broadcast plus two. In 1951, when they first came out, they were $170. Unbelievable. Compared to today's prices. And then after that, sitting over here, where there's no room, is a Johnson Viking Ranger. Built from uh, 1954 to 1961. A 65 watt AM input uh, transmitter. Of course, well known. Of course, below that's another HQ 170. That one has the clock. And then if we go into the, um, the repair yard, It's a little difficult to get into. Underneath we have another Ranger. And we have a Viking 2 CDC. The CDC models opened up for civil defense stations. So they could transmit anywhere. Of course if they had a, a, a crystal or a VFO that would do it. So these are just a couple spare transmitters part of the work area. Stuff everywhere. And that's about it. In the station. A pair of uh, my favorite Electro Voice um, Music Caster speakers. So that's it. <laughs>